Here we go, yo, 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 what up, though, man? I have here on Mogul State of Mind, the man, the myth, the legend, the, one of the probably most prolific, shadowy figures in Detroit history. Um, people know you from running. If you ever heard of this story, you've known from running with the crew, best friends, doing your own thing. Welcome to Mogul State of Mind, Nate Boone Craft. How you doing, my guy? I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. So the first time I ever run into you was on Al Prophet page, man, and just going down through the whole Detroit history of gangsters and everything. And your story came up and seeing you talk, man, my mind is blown back. So I'm excited to capture your journey. Um, the upbringing, um, Nate Boone Craft, are you, where are you come up from? Where are you originally from? East side of Detroit. Mm. We came up from Mississippi, but I was born on the east side of Detroit. And uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> back then it was kind of rough and tough, but mm. I never was one to be a follower or hang out and play games. Mm. I was all the way out there hustling. So I started hustling from the age of nine. Nine years old. I was old. out there selling heroin and shit with, with this guy named Charlie. And uh, by the time I turned 10, we had a falling out. Hmm. Me and my friend, Jerm, I guess I can say his name because he's dead. He passed away last year of COVID. But uh, we had to talk to him and we told him, hey, man, I did this, man. You got to give us some more money. <laughs> and I ain't giving y'all nothing. Y'all y'all should be happy that I'm letting you work. I said, we don't want bringing in your money. I mean, you got to understand, these people ain't wouldn't paying you nothing. When you hired me, what did you do? Tell me to go get the money from them. Did I not come back with the money? Yes. So you got to understand, we need more money. Now, you think we going to give it to us or we going to go our way and start our own shit? He talking about, you ain't going to do nothing. I'll beat y'all ass. That's one. He said, what the fuck you mean one? I said, that's one. You don't threat me and keep on thinking that I'm going to sit here and take it. He said, I'll beat both of y'all. Friend Jerm said, that's two. He talking about what's going to happen when you get to whatever number. you find out. Ah, boom, 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 boom. We blast his ass oh, right there. Shit. Hey, if we got to say three, we ain't going to say it. You'll never hear it. <laughs> oh, shit. Took that motherfucker out back and buried him in his backyard. Went back in, took all his shit. <laughs> Damn. By the time they found that stinky body, the whole neighborhood was stinking. They were like, damn, something foul. <laughs> oh, shit. So, you know, I started at 10, start pushing that until I ran out of it that he had. And then I talked to Frank and see if Frank would sell to me. I know I'm a kid, but you got to it's a look at my record, man. People out here knows me, and they know I'm going to get my money, and I'm going to give you yours. Matter of fact, I got yours up front. you like, man, get your little, he start looking around like, oh, like he been set up. Yeah. No, man, ain't no set up, man. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this bag on this table. There's a phone number there. Call me if you think that you can make something happen. I got up and walked away, and my friend was sitting behind him which he didn't know, just in case he got stupid. <laughs> we both walked out the door. Within like three hours, I got a call on that phone. Rotary phone back then, yeah. you know. And he said, uh, listen, come back up there to that restaurant. I need to talk to you. I said, okay, I go up there, but he wasn't in there. He was sitting in the car. I'm like, he said, come on, get in. This don't sound right. I said, yeah, but my friend is woofing. Said, Come on. Damn, y'all two short motherfuckers. I said, yeah. So we got in the car, drove around over on uh, Emerson, down by a few. And he said, uh, you see that can over there? I said, yeah. I think somebody left something in there. So I tell him to go get it. Tell him to go over there and fit. He said, uh-uh, you can't get back in the car with it. <laughs> Ain't no thing. He said, 
Give me a call when you are ready to talk again. We never said the word drugs or yeah. anything, so we left, went back to uh, Tyler's house since he was, you know, deceased. So we used his house up for almost like three months before that body really started stinking. And we'll go there and cut it up, bag it up, put it out there. At that time, we decided to change the name to Do the Die. Mm. That people know you do this, you can die. But you better step on it a little bit because we ain't step on it. At all. Just pure. that much. Oh, no, we yeah. stepped on it. But we didn't step on it that much. We might put a one or a two cut on it. Got you. But you better put the rest. People was loving it. They was looking around, hey, man, where that dude or die? Because nobody knew it was us until way later until, until I started selling to my sister friends. Yeah. And they went and told my sister, hey, your brother trying to beat me up. He said, who? Pop? Willie? Who? And I'm like, no, nah, boom. Boom. My little brother? My baby brother? And, of course, when I come to Halloween, I'm like, did you threat Jerome? Who, me? No. Why? Why would you think that? He said, because he came in talking about you threatening to beat his butt. I said, for what? And when she didn't say what for, I know he didn't tell her that he was shooting up hair around. Yeah. And he owed me money because I gave it to him on the credit. So I waited and then he popped back up at my sister's house because I stayed with my sister every night I did. Popped back up. I said, check this out, man. You a goddamn rat. You can't talk to me like that. I said, that's one. Oh, we're going to throw that to two. I heard about you in that counting. I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> and while I'm saying that, Jern came out the bathroom and stood behind him. He, he, he didn't know it until he heard that click in the back of his head. Click. I said, don't turn around. That'll be three. Then I got to clean my sister's floor. <laughs> but then here come my sister out the kitchen. Jern put his gun back up and sat down. We just sat there looking at the TV. He was going to say something, and then I said, yeah, okay. And he shut it up. My sister, said, what's wrong? Nothing. Boom. What's going on between you and Jerome? I said, ain't nothing going on. He just made at me because his girlfriend liked me. Come on. <laughs> you ain't nothing but 10, maybe 11. She's 16, 17. I said, yeah, I like them old like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> and, of course, I did have his girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. shit. She liked me because I had that old black spade hair because my mother engine, so okay. I took out to her with the hair. <sighs> but yeah, that picked me up from that until I got, I ain't quite sure what age I was when they locked me up in the youth home. 